Good morning. My name is Marnie, and you have that in your in the information thing that was in your bulletin last week. But in case you forget, I forgot my name tag this morning, and thank goodness for Laverne, because he gave me one, so my name is right here, Marnie. It's really, really nice being with you this morning. I know Mike very well. I've known him since he was 16. Um, so I'm, it's such a pleasure to be here in his home congregation. Let's join together from the call to worship. People of summer, gather your hearts for worship. People of sunshine and of rain, gather your minds for worship. People of growing things, Gather your spirits for worship in this place. Our first hymn is in Voices United 325, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation.
Let's join together in our opening prayer. Hover and rest here, Great Spirit. Take all this brooding of our souls and flare forth in us till we give birth to something new. Take this confusion of ideas and hopes and come, Lord Jesus. In flesh the dust of stars and the salt of the sea, renew our roots with your summer rain and help us grow wild and splendid in your garden. Amen. Now I notice we have one small person, I mean aside from me, in the room. So I'm going to assume that you're all children of God and you're extra special child of God, okay? And there's a couple at the back? Oh, way back. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it because if you're sure, you might be shy. And if you don't answer it, I can get a grown-up to answer it. Okay? Have you ever been sent on an errand? Have you ever had to take a message or a letter or a note to someone? No, this is me. Because your mom always does it. All right, already does it. That's very handy. Okay, are there any other brave, grown-up children in here? I mean, you can just nod your head or, or shake your head, whatever you like, uh, because we're talking about being sent on an errand. I'm often, I'm often go on errands. Mind you, half the time I leave my list on the kitchen table, so I only get half of them done. Um, there are errands that you don't really want to go on, you know, like, um, oh, can you go see who's at the door? I know who's at the door. I'm not answering it. Okay. <laughs> Got that one. Have you ever had to deliver a message? Hand a message to someone. Give someone a message, especially to a stranger. Ever done that? I have, and I was terrified. I mean, it was another church lady, and I was like, you know, six or seven. But I was petrified because this grown-up was tall and wore glasses and, and had gray hair and scared me. She looked too much like my grandmother. So I was petrified. But I, went, I remember errands that I was really scared to go on, like living with my grandmother for a year or two during the Korean War when my dad was overseas. And she asked me to go down the basement to get some potatoes. I'd never been down there before. I opened the door and <clears throat> it wasn't cement. <laughs> it was rocks piled up and some of them were wet. And there might have been creepy things down there. But I closed my eyes, walked out a few steps, grabbed the potatoes, ran up again. Of course, it didn't help any too either because the potatoes had eyes in them. You know those things that grow out? Not a pleasant experience. So it's not easy. Taking and sending, going on an errand, it's not easy taking particular messages to people. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So before we do that, though, we'll have a, a short prayer. And I'm, I'm, this is a children's prayer, so just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the strength to carry out errands on your behalf. We thank you for knowing that some of the messages are welcome. Let us pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I know that um, the can Christ candle has to be lit, and I was thinking, okay, I can do this, 
But then I had an idea, because I found out, I mean, your cupcake's over there, and I found out why. It's because Laverne is having a birthday tomorrow, so I thought maybe we, she could light the Christ candle for us. Will you come over here, please, Laverne? <laughs> Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus is our friend who loves us always. Thank you, Laverne. Let's join together in another hymn, Voices United, 509, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 6 and 7 to 16. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens. 
and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. And reading from the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke, verses 1 to 11, and 16 to 20. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. And if not, it shall return to you and remain in the same house eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer deserves his wages do not go from house to house whenever you enter a town and they receive you eat what is set before you heal the sick in it and say to them the kingdom of God has come near to you But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. 
and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. May God bless the reading of his holy word. So, having read that and listened to it, picture this. Okay, so it's 2,000 years ago, give or take, sometime between 30 and 33 Christian era. I keep saying A.D. because I'm old-fashioned. It's hard to... Jesus is talking to 70 faithful followers. Now, in some sources, we're told that it was 72, but we will use 70 from this gospel. And instructing them on how to go on a mission. He gives them an impressive list of do's and don'ts. Now go. Oh, and by the way, I am sending you like lambs into the midst of wolves, so don't carry a purse or a bag, don't wear sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. Oh, and if there is anyone there who shares the peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Let's see, what else? Oh, yes. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the labor that you deserve to be paid. And don't go back and forth to different houses. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Then cure the sick who are there, Oh, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, if it happens that you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, good and loud, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. But know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Hmm... Oh, and the last bit of advice, anyone listening to you is listening to me. And if they reject you, they reject me. Now, this is the big time, boys, because if someone rejects me, they reject the one that sent me. Oh, yeah, that's one big list. But here's the thing. Those 70 disciples were completely defenseless. They did depend on Christ, and they were expected to depend on the reception of the people they met. It is apparent they were willing to follow direction and head out two by two. They were sent in pairs because their work was difficult, even with help. That was some commission. We today in this world, 2,000 years later, still occasionally experience a fervent pair of missionaries at the door, but for the most part, people who are Christ followers leave their homes to go to their places of worship here, to hear and think and reflect about God. Nonetheless, the mission or commission is still there the struggle to get the message out. And although most folk come to a place of worship rather than go out, we have ways of spreading the message. It's called discipleship. Our discipleship might not render us quite as vulnerable as those 70. We still follow, or at least try to follow, divine direction. And in so doing, we are probably recognizing the same revelations experienced by the 70. They were no doubt discovering and living the opportunities which were there to help them, bringing the message to the people and the people into the kingdom Jesus promised them, and bringing God's news to the entire world it wouldn't have been easy to carry out the mission with which the 70 had been tasked. That reference to lambs in the midst of woods, wolves, it is striking, really striking. There's 
little, so vulnerable than having nothing. No money, no bag, no sandals, being without the least requirement for survival. It is, therefore, easier to understand that they must have truly believed in their mission, as indeed they confirmed to Christ on their return. That's all the more meaningful when we consider the political and cultural climate of the time. These followers of Christ, these believers, had to have heard rumblings from the high priests about this upstart preacher. This was a time when Jewish people studied religious law as children and held close to it. A time when politics and spirituality were linked in a highly complex way, when hope was to be embodied in a messiah. This was a time when there were those, the zealots, who believed only violence was the means to an end. This was a time when the Sadducees, an elite of the rich, the high priests, wanted more than anything else to preserve what they had. This was a time when the Pharisees clung rigidly to Jewish law. That all amounted to a world that was not comfortable, not complacent with its implied danger. When I was reflecting on this scripture, I was wondering if when Jesus gave that great commissioning, he knew there would be those who worried enough about being associated with him that they would try to convince some of the other followers of the new idea should, if they should continue to obey the laws, the Hebrew laws, as before. Having pondered on that, I am convinced he did. He had to have known. He must have known what his own fate would be. That becomes more real when we look at the post-resurrection urgings of Paul. Because if we jump ahead about 30 years or so and read the epistle for the day, we find that Paul tries to convince them of the error of following only old law and therefore that old religion. Reading Galatians chapter 6, verse 12, it is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. They want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh and that they are obeying the law. In other words, there are those who pay lip service to the teachings of Jesus but will cling to the requirements of the old law to hedge their bets so that they will not be found wanting by those in authority. The same people try to prove they are following the law by keeping the requirements of that law, even though they don't follow all Hebrew law, and those are the hypocrites. Hypocrisy, whether overt or covert, is not new. Occasionally now, in our own faith community, there are those who can profess to but are not willing to actually carry out any form of Christ living. It may be because they find it too difficult or uncomfortable or they are just not ready. Paul cautions against responding in partial faith. He knows it's not easy. In verse 16, he says, as for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Thus can they be assured. He explains that the best way to understand the Christian life is to live it, which is the direction that Jesus gives to the 70 when he sends them to go to everyone they can and touch them with the ministry of God's love. The 70 are being called to provide faithful witness 
of the Lord to all they meet. The commission may seem overwhelming, and in fact it is. Two thousand years later, we have been commissioned too. We carry it out in so many places. The homeless shelter at the local food bank, mending hymn books, teaching in Sunday school, being in a hospital bed, or with a friend or neighbor who has just lost a loved one. We do it through fundraisers for folks whose entire town has burned down, through support for the interchurch refugee group. We do this as ordinary, fragile human beings, as we are called upon. We do it. The beauty of the commission in this world If nobody has to do it alone, indeed, we have our faith communities as part of our support network. With God's grace and the Holy Spirit, and because of our faith, the results of our commissioning can lead towards wonderful things that don't break any law. We can go out into the world because there are people in great need. We can go out as caring people who identify with folks in their hurt and in their need. We can go out with hope and and the realization that when we carry out a commission to the least and the lowest, we encounter Christ. We can be so at one with Christ that he will live and act through us. Jesus sent the seventy to proclaim the word of God, moving into people's hearts. And he tells us to proclaim the same message today. We do! People of all ages, stature, color, lifestyle, follow Jesus. We all do it! Knowing that good news is shared all over the world, in spite of hostility and resistance from other faiths or governments that try to suppress the message, and the denial influence of the secular world, we do it. We do it when we respect one another, when we live in loving relationships, when we work to bring about social justice, and generally when we reflect God in our works and deeds. We do it. The Lord gives us the great commission and Just as the seventy returned with joy, so too will we. Thanks be to the Lord. Let's join together in our next hymn, Voices United, 512. 512, Lord, you give the great commission.
life and work of the church, I know you had an insert in your bulletin from last Sunday. I don't know if you've got it today. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything we need to add. Does anybody have a, an announcement they'd like to make? Or yes. Oh, please. Do you need the mic? Would you like? Oh, you've got a mic. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's working. Yes, it is. I'm uh, Phil Fay, and this morning I'm here as treasurer of the Sunday, Sunday Club. And the other day I received a letter from uh, Margaret Richardson of the Interchurch Refugee Group, thanking Rothwell for the contribution that we made through the Lenten project. I posted her letter on the Who Cares notice board, and she also sent some photographs of the children uh, actually using part of the money that we, that we sent. On the topic of the Lenten project, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I sent a cheque to the IRG for $1,200 uh, $1, raised by the project. What I didn't know was that Jim Huber had already sent another cheque directly to them for the money he got from counting money out of the special collection cans. And that amounted to $655. So that'll, that's already gone to them as well. And since sending my cheque a few weeks ago, things were still coming in. And so I've got another further $140 raised to send off. So the grand total raised by the Lenten Project actually came to just over $2,000 which I think is an incredible amount. I'd like to thank everyone again for the generosity of the support for this project. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Eva. I'm, uh, I was talking to Marnie this morning, and some of you don't, a lot of you don't have the announcements in your bulletin. It's because you had them last week. But those who weren't here last week, there are lots up there that you can read at your leisure, and it tells you who the next um, preachers are this, this um, month, and all kinds of information. So if you want more information, they should be out in the back there. Thank you. Good morning. I think most of you know me as I'm Laverne Palmer. Uh, Marnie suggested there are some cupcakes available over in the fellowship hall. I just wanted to thank my wife, Barbara, for preparing all those cupcakes instead of us having a cake and trying to mess with cutting it. Uh, as you know, we tend to like to share milestones in the family with our church family, and this is one of them. In case you're wondering about the birthday, count the cupcakes. <laughs> if, if you don't come up with 80, somebody's been snacking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Eva, and thank you, Laverne. Um, okay, if there are no more announcements, in the difficult call, we discover the God who loves us. In the test of our faith comes the assurance of God's faithfulness. Let us respond to the God who has already responded to us in love. Let us join together in our morning offering.
Let's join together in our offertory prayer. Gracious God, we know we are blessed. We know we are part of all creation and entwined not only with all matter here on earth, but also with the cosmos. Bless what we present this day. Transform and use it to reveal your presence in the troubled places of this realm. Amen. Before we gather together for prayer, I would invite you just to open Voices United to page 757, which is Psalm 30. We will be reading that responsively at the end of this prayer. And now we gather our hearts in prayer. Loving Creator, we come to you today with open hearts, finding comfort and reassurance in your presence. We thank you for calling us into your service, as you so many years ago did through your Son. We thank you for guiding us to and through your truth. We are grateful to you for your protection of us when we fear being overwhelmed with all we believe we must do to complete our duties, to fulfill our responsibilities, to carry your message. Our hearts are full in witness here today. And we are thankful that each of us has the strength of our own spirit renewed and refreshed. Healing God, we thank you for all your blessings and ask your help as we continue to take care of all that is part of your blessing, that we can honor them as you honor us in your universal grace. There is so much to be done to see wholeness in the world, and we strive to learn, to become wise in working for all forms of justice. We ask that your love embrace all those who work in different ministries to care for those who need it, to bring your word, your promise, your help to those isolated from you, either because of sorrow, or disillusionment, or because of suffering from life's tribulations. Helping, Lord, as one who has raised the faith and hope to raise us up, keep us firmly grounded walking on the sacred path of your call to us. We think especially of all those who despair because of danger, fear, alienation, their families and friends who try to lift them into your world full of grace. We rejoice in all those who follow your commission of all those who celebrate you, those who preach in your name, those who lead in your name, who sing, dance, live, and love all in your name. Gracious and all-knowing Almighty, we raise our voices in praise to you as we read Psalm 30. I will ex. Stow you, O God, for you have lifted me up. O 
God, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. Let all your servants sing praises to you and give thanks to your holy name. In my prosperity, I said, You turned your face away from me, and I was greatly dismayed. I called to you. I made my appeal. Will the dust give you praise? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? You turned my mourning into dancing. So that my heart will sing your praise without ceasing. Amen. As we go now, remember, even in the world, you are on holy ground. Rejoice, persevere, contribute, extend hospitality, bless. Live in harmony with one another, with the support of the Holy Spirit, by and for the love of Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. We join together for our closing hymn in Voices United. Nine six four. Nine six four. Go now in peace.